Hi, I'm Heather from Hey of Booktubes and welcome to another <laughs> Book Talk Gives Me the Ick. So I think the Book Talk is a great platform. Obviously, it's just like every other community. There's lots of diverse and amazing creators. The algorithm definitely does not promote diversity. And it also definitely rewards ridiculousness, unhinged behavior, <laughs> if we're being honest with each other. So I feel like sometimes the book talk videos that you get pushed uh through the algorithm are so far out there it's kind of why would why would anybody do this as always i have a disclaimer this is like my fourth or fifth video of doing this i do it whenever i have enough screenshots that have come across my page i don't go looking for it i don't accept it from any other sources like if i saw a, a wild thing going viral on Twitter or anything like that. No, it has to come across my For You page on TikTok. And it has to be something that I'm just like, I would never read this book based on this video. I would absolutely never read it. And not only would I never read it, but I would actively avoid it based on the thing that you are marketing it to me as. Like you're trying to get me to read the book and your choice is just so repulsive to me that I would, that you failed like I would never read that however <laughs> some people do so as always I'm not showing you the TikToks I'm not showing you which books it's about or what creators made it or any of those things and again book talk as a whole is not good or bad it's just as varied as any other thing and I have lots of amazing creators on there that I really enjoy and I think do some of the best book content on the internet but that's not this that's not this <laughs> these are not good ones all right here we go she signed the divorce papers in front of her CEO husband and left six years later he crouched against the wall secretly this is this is the factor secretly playing with the child <laughs> and said call me daddy my company is yours first of all so inappropriate like so inappropriate um I understand that maybe you didn't know that you had a child yada 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 but it's not your job to introduce yourself as their father and also what six-year-old cares about having your company None of them. None of them. He doesn't even know you. You're a stranger. <laughs> I mean, like if he grew up with you and wanted to be just like daddy his whole life and you know my kids, my son specifically, go through phases where like they want to work my husband's job or they want to be in college football or they want to be WWE wrestlers, you know. But oftentimes, even though it's not a glamorous option, they want to be like their dad. Even if he had grown up his whole life, why would, what, what would your company belonging to him even mean to him? Like it's, the concept is too far, it, it means nothing. All right. <laughs> also, by the way, this will be a not safe for work video. So be careful if you have little ears listening or, you know, if coworkers could listen or whatever, um, know that. When he gripped her waist to tug her closer, the desire exploded. <laughs> when her pussy touched his erection. I don't know, girl, you might need to like, check that. Why are you exploding? <laughs> when he says, I like broken things and I want to break her some more. I would like to opt out of this. <laughs> Go away. I have enough problems. I don't need more. I don't need more issues. I don't need you manufacturing more issues for me. <laughs> Your fake boyfriend tells you he reads romance novels because they're like manuals for pleasing women. Oh, this one annoyed me so much. You're impressed by his insight. And jealous of the woman he's done so much research for. Then he asks you, what's your favorite romance novel, Marnie? He asks, his voice is smooth and sinful as melted chocolate. <laughs> Uh, I have to tell you, I've eaten a lot of chocolate in my day and never have I been like, this is so smooth and sinful. <laughs> I'd like to read it. Good grief. It's like he's asking how I'd like him to fuck me. Or he could just ask you that. <laughs> or you guys could just talk about what you want in bed. I don't know. Call me crazy. But if you are going to sleep with someone, I don't think communication is a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. My husband and I have been together for well over a decade and we still talk about 
oh, I really liked that. I want more of this. How was that? Is that something that works for you every time? Is it something that works for you occasionally? Communication is a good thing. Communication is not a sign of defeat. It's not, a, oh, you weren't good enough on your own, so you must be bad. Everybody has their own preferences, and sometimes those preferences change because your body physically changes, you're into something that you didn't know existed before. <laughs> what have you, like communication is healthy. You you, you could just do that. And, qu and quite frankly, furthermore, furthermore, <laughs> If my husband asked me what my favorite romance novel was, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I would not be thinking, oh, I need to tell him the one that I want to reenact the sex scenes for. Number one, number one, there's so much more to romance than just sex. I love open door sex scenes in my books, right? That is my preference. That is what I want in my books. However, however, it's just the icing on the cake. It's not often the make or break part. And I don't know, if my husband wanted to know a particular fantasy I had or a particular scene I wanted, we would be specific about that, not just what's my favorite book. That's whatever. Enough of that. <laughs> when your mate says you're his, but won't, oh. <laughs> this makes me so irrationally angry. Um, this. It's just abusive and weird and I hate it. When your mate says you're his but won't let you feed from his knights who are your guardians by birthright, he won't feed you either, but he follows through with a political betrothal and takes a second mate while leaving you untouched. What the heck? Like what, what the heck? <laughs> Every time he tries to produce an heir with her, your mate Mark burns leaving you incapacitated. This part of faded mates, I just, despise it. I despise it. If it like causes them pain or they can feel or whatever. I remember like a couple. I remember what was that book? I remember some oh it was a fantasy book. Oh I remember this. <laughs> he was like already in love with someone but he like got like made it or whatever magically to this person and so he's like trying to have sex with like his first love and she is letting him and he doesn't know that she is like feeling pain and like agony and everything like every time he touches this other woman. So, <laughs> hated it. Anyways, broken and alone you get a fever that won't stop but his knights refuse to leave you when you're afraid that you'll hurt them as your fangs drop and you know you're going to go feral. Again, just like abuse. You cannot not give someone what they need to survive and it be anything other than abuse. But it's your wolf shifter guardian who hates vampires that steps up. You will feed from me. Let me serve you as I'm meant to. I sure hope she doesn't end up with her fade mate at all. I hope they kill him. That would be great actually. But I certainly won't be reading it because I don't get it. I don't like a marther. I don't like a marther for no reason. She goes to the doctor to get on birth control. Doctor asks if the intern can join in. Her best friend's older brother enters the room with a smirk. Ethics. <laughs> Ethics. We have all of these rules and these things for a reason. You can't just do that. Oh my God. She was pregnant to her best friend's older brother in high school. This is the same book, by the way, but a different TikTok. Okay, so he enters the smirk, w the room with the smirk when she's getting birth control, but apparently he already impregnated her in high school. Okay, but he left town eight years ago. Now he's standing in front of her, a tear falling down his cheek. Where's the baby, Charlotte? <laughs> Ew! <laughs> you got her pregnant in high school and abandoned her and now you're like, where's the baby? I don't know. Listen, I don't know if she's a single mom. I don't know if she had an abortion. I don't know if she had a miscarriage. I don't know. But any and all, any of those scenarios, don't make it better that this is his response. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Her trying to keep a low profile on her first day of training at her new job. The CEO's son in the back of class. I just found my newest obsession. <laughs> um, I'm sure no power dynamics or ethics or 
HR violations will be present, I'm sure. He ignored the text from his wife. <laughs> Divorce. Listen, this is, this is too much. He ignored the text from his wife because he was taking care of his first love in her house. No. No. If you actually have a relationship with someone where like you truly do need to take care of them, that needs to be in communication with your spouse. And probably your spouse would also be involved. You know, I don't want my husband to leave his ex-girlfriends for dead <laughs> when he could have when he could have helped them. At the same time, like it's not a secret, it's not him choosing them over me. Like if you're in a partnership with somebody, then you have to partner with them. It has to be joint effort, joint communication, and it can't just be, well, like, I don't want to be a bad person. I have to take care of them. Like, okay, that still needs to be in cooperation with your spouse. All right, <laughs> back to the beginning. <laughs> he ignored the text from his wife because he was taking care of his first love in her house. He came home only to find his wife's pregnancy report and a divorce document. Go and find her. No. No. What does... No. <laughs> if your wife was at the emotional place where it was like, does he even care about me? And then there's a test and you fail the test. And then she wants a divorce. Um, woman's rights. <laughs> no fault divorce. It's a good thing. When she's a stressed minimum wage waitress, so she steals a treat to make herself feel happy. The Italian Mafia boss smirking as he watches her steal from him on camera because now she's his. I get the impression that she's working at his restaurant. So why is she a stressed minimum wage waitress? Pay your workers. <laughs> you can't just only take care of the ones that you're sexually attracted to and want to make your wife. She's in this bad position because you didn't pay your workers in the first place. And you should be ashamed and you should fix it. When her cold, distant husband brings her into his study and says he has a surprise for her. Can we do it on your desk? Oh, can I go upstairs and dress like a sexy secretary? <laughs> I wasn't talking about sex. He tells her that he's <laughs> donated buildings at two of the top universities in the country so she can now take her pick at which one she'd like to complete her degree. He thinks he's done her a favor, but she just wants to slap him silly. What a horrid thing to do. Doesn't he know her at all? How could you do that to me? We all know, right, that this is how the system works. We understand this. It is not a merit-based society. And it's certainly not at the top schools in the country. If you think that donors aren't considered first on who gets in, you could be the most worthy student in the world. That does not mean that you are getting your laurels. It doesn't mean that you're getting what you deserve based on your merit. That's not how the system works. How dare this man, who is a billionaire, by the way, I'm pretty sure, who has profited from the system, know how to work the system. And doesn't he know you? I cannot stand. You have a billionaire love interest and then you get mad at him when he does billionaire things. No. Ethically? Ethically? No good billionaires, right? However, he's your romance love interest. You're obviously okay with it to some extent. I, I know I rant about this all the time. I know I rant about it all the time, but I cannot and desist. I must, I must get my little speech out because why, why do we take someone who is so rich that money means literally nothing to them, right? Nothing to them. They could buy you anything and everything in the entire world that you want, including donating companies to universities or buying entire businesses or entire housing projects, etc., etc., and constantly have more money than they started with. Money means nothing to them. They physically cannot run out of money because of capitalism. And you think that you are taking some sort of moral and ethical stance by not letting them spend money on you. It means nothing to them. They literally have so much that they could buy you anything. But when it's the small town romance, it's okay 
for that blue collar worker who, you know, has enough money to pay his bills is never going to be wealthy. It's okay for that person to buy you a present. It's okay for that person to buy you a meal as it should be, right? Like it's okay to accept things from other people. But when you have someone who has more money than any human should possibly have, they shouldn't spend money on you. They can't even miss it. They physically can't run out of money. Oh no, he doesn't even know you at all. I'm here to work my way up. Shut up, shut up. You're married to a billionaire. <laughs> You could be the best person in the world um, and the fact that you're married to a billionaire is not going to be separate from how people treat you and you know the results that you get. It's not separate. You can't make it separate. <sighs> Just, ugh. I'm actually so angry right now. These boys have no idea how much I've changed in the four years I've been gone. If he thinks now inviting me to the party is going to stop me, Leave, Mila. You weren't invited, Jace snarls. He was my best friend. All three were, Jace, Hunter, and Roman. I realize they've all grown up. They're not the boys I left behind. No, they've grown into men. Oh, I hate this so much. I lick my lips at the sight of the three of them. I don't know if this is just like my own personal revulsion, but I absolutely cannot stand that. I feel like it's so predatory. <laughs> No one wants you here, Jace repeats as if I didn't hear him the first time. He says that, but the other two, do they want me here? I flirt with an old friend, trying to push Jace's buttons. You can have her, Jace says. Hunter quickly adds, just know I was her first kiss. My whole body freezes. Ah, fuck. Jace, Roman, and Hunter stand and I quickly move away. I was her first kiss, Jace growls. I forgot the last time I saw them all. I went to each of them. I asked all three of them to be my first kiss. I knew they had a pact. No one can have me, except I didn't think I would see them again. I broke their pact. Which one of us was your first, Roman demands. I will never kiss and tell. This is so toxic. It's so... Now. <laughs> I don't like any of you, actually. She ignored me at lunch. This new girl, Lexi. She smells like my mate. Mine. She watches me approach as she waits in line for world history. I give her my biggest sexy grin that works on all the girls. Her face is expressionless. Okay, I'm sure she's just playing hard to get. Lexi, we didn't get to finish our conversation. Her amber eyes find mine. They're like flames and I'm the moth. He was a moth to the flame. She was holding the matches. Whoa! <laughs> we weren't having a conversation. Go to the end of the line. I'm not going to the end of the line. I growl at the guy behind her and shove him out of the way to take his spot behind her. She turns her back to me and I can't help myself. I take the strands of her silky hair and run my fingers through it. What is wrong with you? Are you touching my hair? She seems angry. Personal space, personal boundaries. That's better than not talking to me. I shrug, nothing's wrong with me. All my body parts work. One in particular is working very hard. <laughs> It was so soft, I wanted to pat it. Well, that sounds dumb, but her scent is scrambling my brain. She just huffs at me and gives me her back. All my pickup lines don't seem to work on her. Here's a novel concept. Don't do pickup lines. Just talk to people like you're actually interested in them. So, where are you from, I ask. That's a normal question to ask someone, right? No answer. I stand up straight and adjust myself in my jeans. Okay, how about you ask me a question and I'll answer, then I ask you one and you answer. She turns to me, her smile telling me she's willing to play this game. Were you dropped on your head as a baby? She tilts her head and raises a brow. Wow, she's a smart ass and sexy. I think I found the one. Yay, ableism. So witty, so charming. They annoy me so much. They annoy me so much. When you think she cheated, so you betray her and then realize you made the biggest mistake of your life. I freeze as I hit the kitchen and spot the two rings sitting on the kitchen island. No, I rush forward and my stomach whirls as I see her wedding ring sitting there. She left me and wants a divorce. You betrayed her. You accused her of cheating and you betrayed her. <laughs> 
I'm probably leaving too, won't lie. Shortbread, Romeo's arrogant voice snarled from the jaws of his study. Come inside. Yes, I bent down to tug my funny, my fuzzy socks up over my mini mouse sweatpants. <laughs> Is it Halloween? No, then why are you dressed as a toddler? Comfort first, right? Comfort is what mediocre people strive for once they realize the currency of success is hard work. <laughs> Again, he's a billionaire. Comfort is what mediocre people, that's you and me, strive for. I would like to have comfort in this life, yes. I would like to have enough money to provide comfort to me and my family. Revolutionary, if you will. Comfort is what mediocre people strive for once they realize the currency of success is hard work. No one wants to work anymore. You just need to get up off your ass and work. So true. <laughs> just. Is she wearing the type of outfit that I like? No, she's not. I personally, I mean fuzzy socks, check. Sweatpants, check. Minnie Mouse, no. I'm not a Disney adult. I never have been into anything like that, to be honest. If my partner, if my spouse, if my husband, if my boyfriend, if the person I was even, if my friend was like, why are you dressed like a toddler? And they meant that. Eat the rich. <laughs> Pay your workers. Workers deserve to have comfort. Workers deserve to be compensated for the hard work that they are giving you. Shut up. Surely he didn't mean those books. His filthy touch, a lover's thrust, blindfolded by my professor, dominated by two alien alphas. Must I continue? I lose a brain cell for every second we discuss them. <laughs> what? the fuck you were talking to romance readers in a romance book and you were having your hero be belligerent towards romance books um real men do that not not fictional men <laughs> now i will say my husband do i um potentially scandalize him on a regular basis with my romance books absolutely absolutely but he has never in all of the years that I've known him about anything been belligerent towards me. You know why? Because that's not what you do towards your partner. <laughs> that's not what a healthy relationship looks like. That's not what happily ever after looks like. If your partner is being belligerent towards you because of something that you enjoy, red flag. And she admitted her feelings to her best friend. He rejected her. Five years later, they run into each other at a wedding and he finds out she isn't a virgin anymore. The real reason he rejected her was that she was too innocent for his erotic lifestyle. But now, the, the, the idea that what you're into sexually is a direct reflection of your sexual experience is ridiculous to me it's ridiculous to me if you're into kink you're into kink whether you've had no partners or you've had 85 partners like they just they're not it's not an equivalency test they don't they don't line up you know what does matter for kink and for what you're into is communication communication is this something that you're into too do we have any overlap in our sexual desires? But being a virgin is just not a good reason to turn somebody down. It's not. You can be 35 and be a virgin. There are way more adults that have never had any sort of sexual relationship before than you would think. And that doesn't make them any less worthy of having one now if they are interested in it. It should not matter to you. Truly. Are you compatible with that person? Then it doesn't matter how many or zero or 50 partners that they've had before you at all. When she's trying to hide how sick she's feeling, but her grumpy boss comes over to feel her forehead for a fever. <laughs> Get your hands off of me. You're not just <laughs> like I'm a toddler, like you're my mother. No, thank you. No, thank you. 
but before she knows it, he's carrying her out of the party so he can take care of her. Don't work when you're sick. Don't go to work sick. It's not like some sort of bar of excellence. You're making other people sick and you're not giving your body what it needs. I understand that a lot of us don't have a choice. I understand that. But let's not hold it up as some sort of pinnacle of virtue when in fact it's a bad thing that anybody has to go to work sick. When he knows she's jail bait and he is committing a crime, <laughs> but he can't help it. She tastes so damn good. Ew. <laughs> I don't know if this is actually like a minor, but either way, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? What do you mean this is your TikTok to try and promote this book? So I'll pick it up. When he knows she's jailbait and he is committing a crime, but he can't help it. She tastes so damn good. Ew. But she is his brother's best friend. Well, I'm glad the brother's best friend is more of an issue to you than the fact that they're literally underage that it's illegal, that it's morally and ethically bankrupt. <laughs> Just, how is this your romance hero? <laughs> when he believes women have no say in important matters, but she challenges his notion. I don't believe that women were in value or had brains or had a brain in their head, but I want to sleep with you, so I guess I'll listen to what you have to say. <sighs> My blood pressure is rising. <laughs> when he doesn't care that she is on her period and reaches between her thighs to pull that tiny string, he places the blood-soaked tampon on the nightstand. <laughs> While she looks at him in horror. I can't believe you just did that. I'm looking at you in horror too. What do you mean you're putting your blood, the, my bloody tampon on the nightstand? What is wrong with you? Ew, 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 ew. Listen, I actually don't have a problem with period sex. Like, you know, if everybody's okay with it, great. But putting a bloody tampon on the nightstand? Put it in the trash can. Put it in the trash can. Put it in the trash can. <laughs> um, we, we aren't having sex if you do that. I can promise you that. Ew. Ew. I know that people can be, like, repulsive. <laughs> Hygienically speaking. But that's disgusting. That's disgusting. When her friend's older brother she was crushing on happened to be an OBGYN who gave her an oopsgasm during her appointment. Where are the ethics? <laughs> Listen, I've had three kids. I've had plenty of random things shoved up there in the name of medical. I have never had an oopsgasm. And I am firmly in the belief that just absolutely no attraction <laughs> should be happening between a medical professional and their patient and there's something wrong with you if there is like I just I don't think that there is a single solitary occasion where that would be okay when she's reading her spicy book on the private jet he keeps seeing the word cock flash up on the screen so he plucks it out of her hands and brings his mouth to her neck. You don't have to read about cock when you have one ready and waiting for you here. <laughs> if I'm reading my book and you take it out of my hands and try to put the moves on me. <laughs> if I am in a place in my book where I'm like, you know what sounds good right now? Sex. I will, I will let you know. Don't you take my book away and decide that no, no, do not interfere with my reading. <laughs> there is nothing more unattractive than a person who does not respect another person's sacred reading space. When she's sold to a broken billionaire and he becomes obsessed, she demands to go home and his response is unhinged AF. And then I didn't screenshot the rest. I didn't share it. This entire TikTok, I kid you not, is just a domestic abuse scene. It's just a domestic abuse scene. 
and that's how they are trying to promote the book between the romance hero and the main character. And I'm not kidding, it's, it's just a, a beauty scene. I understand dark romance and stuff and again I'm not saying that my line has to be the line like if Heather's okay with it then it's okay and if she's not then you've gone too far but I really do think that people can go too far and I know that different strokes for different folks is a thing but I don't know I just I can't I can't accept abuse in my happily ever after. When images of him burying his dick in another man's ass keep flashing in her mind, she turns to him and asks, are you bisexual? She whispers while darting glances around the crowded library. <laughs> Amused, he gives her a smirk. No, definitely straight. But you fucked my ex-boyfriend. He sits up, ready for an interrogation. Leaning in, he speaks to her softly. I fucked a tight hole. I don't fantasize about men, nor am I attracted to men. to say I don't even know what to say I don't know but that's messed up when you're afraid of heights but your fake husband lives at the top of a high rise I don't like other people ignoring your fears I just oh I don't like it and he found a mailbox from your friend that read use this if your husband can't do the job right he asks for your hands and wraps his tie around them what are you doing tying you up what? Why? To show you when you're being ridiculous. And then he yanks the tie toward the balcony. Oh no, you say. Yes, I have a surprise for you out there. He doesn't let you argue and basically carries you out. You grip his shirt, closing your eyes. And when the wind whips by, you say, can we go in now? Like, this is not sexy. You can't force people to face their fears. You can certainly talk to them about it and you can have communication and you can decide to do it together and all of that. But you can't, this is, this is abusive in my opinion. Something came in the mail today, he says slow and then drags the toy over your thigh. Your eyes widen and we're not doing anything out here, but he's already tying your wrist to the railing. He chuckles, scream loud, love. We need to let this city know you and your husband have no problems at all doing this. And then he, first of all, that just screams insecurity. Insecurity. Because if you are confident in your sexual prowess, why on earth would you need to prove it to the city? Secondly, yeah. Yeah. Don't take something I'm afraid of and weaponize it against me for your own enjoyment amusement I, like I hate the videos of parents terrorizing their little kids for laughs I hate them I don't think it's funny I don't think it's cute I don't think it's sexy I think it's wrong just full stop it's wrong if, if everyone's not having fun then it's not fun if everyone doesn't think the joke is funny then it's not funny you cannot hurt other people and then say it was just a joke. Especially, I don't don't even get me started on the little kid thing because like their frame of reference is you. They should be safe with you. They should be able to trust you and you should not be abusing that trust for clicks and likes on the internet. When they take turns having you, okay, this is a content warning for incest and rape. When they take turns having you, right in front of your father and brother to prove that you belong to them now. Your father and his crew will know that we are fucking you and their dicks will never be inside you again. Please, they claim you just like they promised. You catch the ice cold gaze of your father just as someone pinches your clit hard. I don't, I don't know guys. <laughs> can't say as I'm interested in that one. When she's huddled into a sleeping bag that is not made for December in Oregon. She can't stop shivering. Then she hears a deep male voice in the darkness from the other side of the tent. Genevieve? Mm, she says, her teeth chattering. She wonders what the hell he wants since they can barely tolerate each other and have hardly spoken more than two words to each other since they met. Come over here. What? Don't argue. You can't sleep in that bag. Come here. Grumbling because she knows he's right, she slips into his bag, sighing at how warm it is. I just don't think that the bar should be literally not watching someone die in front of you when you had the ability to save them. This has come up in other TikTok videos. If it's literally between life and death, 
I don't think that attraction should factor into whether or not you're willing to help that person. Tell me I'm your hero for saving you and delivering you into a world of pleasure. If someone tells me to tell them that they're my hero, ick, ick. <laughs> when your husband demands your attention <laughs> after a long day, your husband comes into the kitchen and demands you follow him. You don't want to leave your friend, so you tell him whatever he needs to say can be said here. He stalks toward you, picks you up, and places you on the counter. He then starts to unbuckle his pants in front of your friend. Shocked, you ask him what he is doing. He says, having a bad day, came here to cream pie my wife's pussy and slap her tits a little. I mean, personally, I would find that embarrassing, inappropriate, and just kind of a douchebag move all around. And I can't say as I'd be real into it. Can't say as I would. And he finds out your ex is in the same city where you were on your honeymoon. So he decides to take your virginity with his tongue. His tongue sank deep inside me. I arched my back, dropping my head and my own so loud. My own? <laughs> I blame TikTok's sensory. Sensory? Sensory? Sensory. The other form of sensory <laughs> practices for this mispronunciation because there was a slash mark in between the M-O and the A-N-E-D. Moaned. It's supposed to say moaned. Gaved on the edge of screaming. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I bought the cow. Only fair I get the milk. What the fuck? <laughs> what is wrong with you? I felt the tip of his tongue find resistance. Pain accompanied the pressure, but so did pleasure. The weirdness of it all. Her dom getting worried that she isn't using her safe word and he's reaching his own limits. Him realizing that she's not a red kind of girl. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Being the type of person that won't use your safe word is not a good thing. That's a bad thing. Honestly, that's a breach of trust of the whole reason why you have a safe word in the first place. A safe word is for both people. It's for all participants. I cannot, I cannot stand people. I cannot stand people who will go so much farther than they should because they don't want to be weak or they don't want to give up or they, no, having boundaries and limits is good and healthy and for everyone. Being able to take the maximum amount of punishment, the maximum amount of abuse, the maximum amount of pain and suffering is not a good thing. And it's not a thing that we should be striving for to achieve. I can't. No. When her car breaks down on the highway and she can't afford to get it towed, so she has to walk three miles into town with her four young siblings. In the blazing heat, they've walked maybe half a mile. She's wondering how she'll get the money for the car repairs when a wine red Mercedes Maybach, I don't even know what that is, pulls in ahead of her. And he gets out, looking amazing in his tailored slacks and crisp white shirt. Uh, hey, Wolf, Esmeralda. The way he says her full name makes her shiver, but he's furious with her. Yeah. Get in the car. They all get in. Why are you so mad at me? Because I can buy you a new car as easily as I can buy you a coffee. This man gets it. This man gets it. The money is not a factor. I'm not letting you buy me a car. Well, you should. Well, I'm not. Good things are wasted on the wrong people. Wasted on the wrong people. <laughs> I hope that you feel good about your moral stance while your siblings walk along the road in the heat. Congratulations on not taking something from somebody who has every ability to give it to you. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Uh, propaganda has ruined so many. <laughs> So many people's mindsets. What is wrong with you? Like you are wrong. You're wrong. And you're suffering for no reason. And it's dumb. It's dumb and I don't like it. And I kind of despise you a little bit. It's, 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 just, it's, mm. Mm. <laughs> if I never read a romance, main character ever 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 again who refuses to accept money from their rich love interest 
and or something that money can buy, it will still have been far and above beyond my maximum. I have already read too much. If I never, ever, ever read it again, it will still have been too much. So that's it. That's all the book talk ick for today. Let me know if you want to read any of these books. <laughs> watching I have more videos like this they'll be in the description so if you want more I have a few thanks so much for watching bye